Scoot towards me a little bit. <laughs> Hi, trucker lady. Okay, so the verdict is in. Tell everybody what you think of lithium. Last time aboard Freedom, we took the plunge into the world of lithium batteries. And not just any lithium batteries, but lithium iron phosphate batteries. After a successful two-day installation that went surprisingly smoothly given some of the added complexities, we're now ready to hit the road again for a week at anchor to put these puppies to the test. It is all eyes on the water to see if these pot, if this pot is actually here. Um, we haven't seen orcas in forever, so it'd be so cool if we did. Um, we can't get very close. So, do you see them at all? Do you see anything? Along with the Space Needle, Mount Rainier, and Bald Eagles, whales, especially orcas, never lose their magic. And they're what we've loved the most about living and cruising here in the Pacific Northwest. Keeping a safe distance, we admired these beautiful creatures and even got to witness a new baby learning the ropes before having to say goodbye. After an awesome 45 minutes admiring the whales and another four hours underway, we had arrived in Gig Harbor, our favorite anchorage just 24 nautical miles southwest of Seattle. Success for the first uh, five hours of boat usage? Yeah, totally. Happy? The alternator didn't blow up, the batteries didn't start on fire, and everything that people say happens with lithium. <laughs> did the voice in your head say that, or no, did somebody actually say that? you always have the naysayers, right? Yeah. It's like new. The boat is coming together. You know what they say, knock One on One boat teeth. unit at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know what a boat unit is, it's a thousand dollars. It's a unit of measurement only boat owners are familiar with. All right. <laughs> All right. All happy right. hour. Happy hour. All right. To boat units and batteries not blowing up. To a couple of successful projects and a Friday in Gig Harbor. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.
Over the next week, I closely monitored the batteries and inverter to confirm everything was working as I had expected, and to make sure nothing was going off the rails. So far, so good. I also had some extra time to bang out some routine maintenance, in between some fun entertainment right off the bow. As it turned out, we were anchored at the starting line for the 2022 Dragon Boat Races here in the harbor. Okay, so the verdict is in. We are extremely happy with the lithium batteries, but if you missed previous videos of us talking high level about what we were gonna do and why we were gonna do it, I guess to answer the first question that a lot of you might have is why did we make the switch to lithium to begin with? We had AGMs prior, now we're with lithium, why? Uh, we made a switch because our old batteries were end of life, so we needed to do something. Um, and how do you know they were end of life? Uh, we knew they were end of life because they were reaching a, um, a state of charge voltage of 50% or less um, when only maybe 20% of the amp hours had been removed from the bank. So we knew they were definitely fatigued um, and, and not giving us the amount of life that they used to. Yeah, and we had them for just about three years, which was one to two years before we thought we'd have to replace them. but. When you equate it to the manufacturer's suggested number of cycles, we were probably there because we anchor out as much as we do. Um, and then the year of COVID, we anchored out like, you know, for three months straight almost. So um, we, we did, I guess, meet the limit of yeah, cycles. Yeah, that, that's rated Maybe not for as much. anywhere from 500 to 1,000 cycles, our old AGM batteries, depending on, um, I guess, how much you baby them. So we don't always return them to 100% state of charge before we start discharging again. And there may have been times we went slightly over 50% state of discharge before we started charging again. So we fell probably closer on the 500 cycle side of the range, um, but I guess it was kind of to be expected. Yeah. So then why did we choose Battleborn? There's a, a lot of lithium options out there, or I guess maybe there aren't a ton of options, but there are. There are. Yeah, and lithium is kind of like uh, the thing of, it's kind of trending right now. Everybody's asking, are you getting lithium? Are you moving to lithium? Should we move to lithium? Um, after a lot of investigation, we went with Battleborn. Why? Uh, Battleborn wasn't the cheapest of the drop-in solutions, uh, but that wasn't important to us. We wanted a battery that had a good reputation, a battery um, that has a, a solid BMS. Uh, we like the fact that they're designed and assembled in the u.s um, it just everything pointed to battleborn being a quality battery uh, they also made a form factor an 8d form factor that was dimensionally identical to the batteries that came out of the boat um, so that made the install a little bit easier but those are the main reasons and did you get word from anybody we know or did was it just google searching batteries no completely internet research right. yeah i would yeah. say he was always researching and, and saying i think i found something oh wait no i think i found something and I, I just cared about the price and you were smarter so and back when we did our last replacement three years ago um lithium was starting to come on the market but there weren't the the options there weren't form factors that were a direct drop in replacement um, but now there's been a lot of changes over the last few years, and I'm sure changes will continue, uh, which made the, the solution a little bit easier to make a decision on this time. Is lithium safe, in it, your opinion? Yeah, the technology's changed. So the, the, the batteries that start on fire um, are lithium-ion batteries. Um, it, probably most notable in like the old, I think it was Samsung Galaxy Notes is when a bunch of phones were starting on fire. Um, we have lithium-iron phosphate batteries, which are uh, significantly safer. Uh, they don't have all the same risk with, uh, you know, fires starting under, you know, operating in a humid or moist conditions. Um, so the, the, the technology that started on fire is, is predominantly lithium ion and not lithium iron phosphate. Um, yeah, and lithium iron phosphate from some videos we've seen is slightly better maybe um, from a conflict mineral standpoint. Um, it sounds like we might be able to feel a little bit better about ourselves, that we're maybe not supporting um, some of the wars around the world or in the Congo with it. Um, you know, I'm sure there's debate about that, but if that's something you're thinking about, if you're kind of anti-lithium because of that aspect, lithium iron phosphate might be a better option. The elephant in the room. Cha-ching! How much did our batteries cost? Everybody wants to know price. That's the first thing I asked 
about everything whenever we watch videos about anybody else how much do these things cost um, so the old batteries that we had lifelines they are $900 a piece for one 8d battery we have four of these batteries in our house bank the new batteries were 2250 um, a piece so a little bit over two times two and a half times um, the price so you know, easy math through the four of them four batteries is basically ten thousand dollars ninety five hundred bucks in batteries is is what we spent yep and we did our we meaning you did the installation yourself so sean here saved us thousands of dollars by doing it himself a lot of questions that we had um, and some concern initially with doing it ourselves was would our insurance cover us there's a lot of insurances out there that will not insure your boat if you one have lithium or if they haven't been installed by an accredited or you know an official electrician yeah make sure to <laughs> check your insurance policy before you decide to jump into it because like elizabeth said not all policies uh right now are accepting of lithium batteries in a boat uh, they perceive a safety concern with it um, I think as it as there is more sort of rules around the technology and rules around the install, I think more and more uh, insurance companies will maybe become more comfortable. But make sure that you check that before you do the install. We were actually up for renewal right when we did the battery conversion. So uh, you know we brought the topic up and made sure we chose a, a new insurance company that was okay with what we did. Yeah, it's uh, perfect timing. The other, the other thing too is the, the cost comparison. That was the batteries alone. Um, our boat did need some other modifications in order to accept lithium, so it wasn't as simple as uh, removing the old batteries and installing the new ones. Um, you saw that in, in, in the video that we needed to change the way that our batteries uh, charged under uh, the engine uh, using an alternator. So we have a new alternator regulator, we have a new Sterling alternator protection device. Um, and there's some different settings that need to be configured in your inverters and chargers. Um, so just make sure that before you, you know, make the switch and decide to just, hey, there's a battery that's the same format as my old ones, it's not as easy as unbolting one battery and putting a new one in. Uh, there are some considerations that you need to think of. Make sure that you understand electrical, you know, not just the 12 volt or 24 volt DC circuits, but make sure that you have an understanding of 120 volt alternating current electrical as well. Um, I, I have a pretty good knowledge of electrical stuff just from the field of work that I'm in. Um, so I felt comfortable doing it, but, but by all means, you know, electrical is not something to, um, you know, play around with if it's not something that you understand. Yeah. So the nitty gritty, when we talk about cost, we did some cost analysis, some down and dirty Excel spreadsheet stuff to see like our, how much worth it was this, um, just given our costs and we equated it to apples to apples. So if we, um, put AGM on the same like 3000 cycle, trajectory and compared that to the lithium at 3000 cycles, which is the minimum that I think we can get out of it. Ultimately, we have a 46% savings in total cost per day, which is the batteries, the fuel of our generator, like the fuel reduction, fuel being the main cost there. Yeah, and that should only improve as we add more charging capacity, as the lithium can accept a higher charge acceptance rate, so they can be charged quite a bit quicker. But that's just yeah. uh, factoring our current charge capacity and the AGM versus the lithium batteries. But again, the, the price of the batteries alone being two and a half times uh, higher, but having a three times life expectancy, just the life expectancy alone um, shows return on investment in the technology and the further savings are gained by the fuel cost, the generator depreciation, because the generator doesn't last forever, um, as well changes. as generator maintenance. Yep. We foresee when we're cruising full time, we might be at anchor 50 to 75% of the time. And lithium batteries, correct me if I'm wrong, like to be used. They like to be working for you and not sitting at a dock. So another thing to consider that if you're a boater, more on the recreational side and maybe not thinking that you're gonna be at anchor as much as we anchor, it may not be worth it. But for us, that was a big driving force behind the why. Yeah, that's a correct. Uh, if you're going marina to marina and your boat is kind of a dock queen, you don't anchor a lot, then don't go rush out and get lithium. It's like uh, any of your small portable electronics. They don't like to sit, you know, plugged into the wall their entire lives. You may notice if you've left a laptop uh, uh, plugged in forever and you choose to unplug it, you know, once a year to take it and use it at, at portable, you'll find out usually that the battery is, is junk. So uh, they, they do like to be cycled occasionally. That's good for them. So don't leave them plugged into a charger. Yeah. 
kind of like everything with boats. They like to be used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. The other final thing we'll just mention that I didn't know and I thought it was pretty interesting is the climate situation with lithium, that they don't like certain climates. Yeah. Um, lithium, a, a lot of lithium batteries, uh, you know, you cannot charge them in extremely cold conditions. So if you, you know, live in Alaska, uh, particularly in the winter, um, you, you know, you're going to want to look into that. Um, some can be charged uh, slowly, uh, but you'll, you'll get um, lithium plating in the batteries if, if you charge them too quickly in cold temperatures. Some batteries out there are actually heated, so they'll use some of the charge current to heat the battery so that the battery can be charged. Uh, boats, you know, maybe the environment is cold, but the batteries are generally in a cabin and the water is typically above freezing. So not as much of a concern as if you're using lithium batteries, say like in an RV, where they're really gonna be exposed to colder temperatures, but certainly something to consider. Yeah, which, you know, might help us decide if we're gonna stay in Alaska for the winter or not. <laughs> okay, so that's the quick down and dirty. We are super happy with the lithium. We have more work to do with the extra charger. I feel like there's more. There's more. We keep talking about all these things. It keeps putting stuff on the list. It's a boat. But it's it's besides a, a charger, it's a list project. I don't know. Before we before we head out on the high seas, definitely the extra charger. Um, just the half time so far with r only running the generator for four hours in the morning versus five and five typically has been amazing for me. If we cut that down even further, it'll be doubly awesome. So we recommend it if you're cruisers like us that have the same needs that we do. Um, we'll leave a link to Battleborn if you wanna learn more about them in the description below. And if you have questions, as always, let us know. Um, we have more work to do that we'll share with you. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss our next video when I take you along to work and show you my hack for reconfiguring a Starlink dishy into a boat-friendly fishy. We'll see you next time.